Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ episode 113, the Knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. And this week, amongst our questions, we're taking a look at some big knives because big knives are fun knives. Let's get into it. All right, for those of you new to this series, what we do is we pull our questions for each episode from the comments section below this video. So if you have a question and you would like it answered in a future episode, leave it in the comments and it's got a shot to get featured in a future episode. Uh, first question today comes from Tim Lawrence. I need a new beater knife, Tim says. I had to use my older version Kershaw Vapor as a chisel. Not advisable. To dig out broken PVC pipe threads in a water tank and ended up breaking it thanks to a hammer. I am, I'm, I'm shivering on the inside. And now it's on the outside. Oh, I, I you've set me on edge already, Tim. I'm glad I did not have one of my better quality knives with me or I would have felt bad hammering on the knife. You should still feel a little bad hammering on the knife. Uh, what knife would you EDC knowing there was a possibility you were going to hammer it to death? If I knew there was a possibility I would have to hammer a knife to death, I'd probably carry a chisel, an actual chisel, but let's, let's, uh, let's stop giving you a hard time, Tim. I'm very sorry. Uh, let's get into the question. Um, Object at hand, you had the knife, you had to get a job done, you got it done. So kudos to you. Um, here's the thing though, I can't think of any real folder that I would kind of buy with the intent of one day possibly doing this to it. Um, there's plenty of strong knives out there, but this is a, a different kind of abuse than most folding knives are kind of designed to take. Uh, like I'm not even sure I would really trust a, uh, something like a frame lock on this. Although I would want something that if I'm hitting it with a hammer, I would want to be hitting metal and not, you know, wood, plastic, G10, anything else uh, like that. And if I had to kind of pick one lock right here, right off the bat, that would be my, my first choice, I would probably say Cold Steel's Triad lock. Here's where things get a little tricky. I had in mind, um, I want a Tonto blade. If you're, if you're really wanting to chisel, I would prefer, you know, doing it with some kind of Tonto-ish blade. Um, and I would want to be hitting on metal, like I said. However, nothing in Cold Steel's lineup right now quite fits that. The closest though, lacking the Tonto blade, however, is the Demco designed AD-10. Uh, this version right here, S35VN drop point blade, G10 handles, $147 and Key point here, we have a metal protruding pommel right there. There is a Tonto version of the AD-10. It's the AD-10 Lite is available in drop point or Tontos, but the protruding pommel here is an injection molded piece on that knife. It's not metal. So I'd rather go with this. I'd rather get that with no Tonto blade than have the Tonto blade and not have this. The lock, the triad lock, I think stands the best chance against that kind of, kind of off axis, you know, hitting and, and vibrations and abuse and such. And the 8010 is a phenomenal knife despite or uh, regardless of any of that type of use. So that's my gun to my head. If I had to make a folder recommendation, this would probably be it. But you're talking about EDC. You didn't specifically say folder. I was kind of reading into it there. So let me show you something that I think would be an even better option. The CRKT right here. This is the 4036 Razel Compact. It's about $48. It has a sharpened leading edge. It is small, full tang, D2 steel. So you'd be hitting on the protruding tang here at the back too. I would get rid of the little uh, paracord fob to do this, of course. This I think stands a better chance. Even though D2 is not the toughest steel in the world, it can certainly hold an edge well. And this is very EDCable thanks to that pocket sheath right here. It's a little wide and there's a bigger uh, pocket option uh, in newly released this year. Uh, I think the 4037 Razel uh, fixed blade, also really cool, but this one's a little more compact. How about that? You've got that sharpened leading edge, you've got VEF flat top serrations on the back and a very utility driven profile overall. 
could be really interesting. And of course I am always a, a proponent of the pocket fixed blade. Check out something like that. Uh, that uh, would do you a little bit better. Um, keep a chisel in the car <laughs> this is my, it's the only other thing I'll say. Actually, you know what we didn't talk about? Mora has a chisel knife specifically. Missed opportunity. Missed opportunity. It's not full tang. Uh, you would be beating on, on plastic uh, uh, handle to do that. But it is, that is an option as well. We'll try to leave Just a link to buy that. Five and consider it disposable. That is also true. Keep one of those in the glove. Actually, a, a more a chisel knife in a car's glove box. I might be buying three more, three more chisel knives today for glove boxes. Three more mores. Three more mores. You can never have too many mores. Actually, I really like that. <laughs> I'm gonna take my own advice and put some more chisel knives in the vehicles. Yeah, yeah, that's happening. Uh, I better get to them before this video posts so they don't buy the ones we have on the shelves right away. We'll get some more. <laughs> All right. Uh, now we come to Steve TQP. Uh, this may sound crazy for a quote unquote survival knife, but have you given any consideration to a folder like the Artisan Cutlery Proponent? It's truly a beast of a folder and even includes a metal pin uh, that when inserted through the blade and handle, make it a virtual fixed blade. It's not a fixed blade. Uh, I've seen other comments that imply this thing could baton a house and quote unquote, survive. Winky faced emoji. Have I given any consideration to a folder like this for survival? I have not. So let me do it right now. Okay, I've, I've just spent as much consideration as I want to. Very cool knife. Uh, and it exists, honestly, to be cool. If we're talking about a tool for something, you know, generically specific like survival, you could certainly make it work. It would be tough, uh, or it'd be a tough handle. This M390 blade wouldn't be the toughest thing in the world. And the blade shape would work could be made to work, I should say, in a quote unquote survival scenario, but it's not exactly ideal. Yes, it's strong, but it wouldn't be my first choice. Honestly, we've already looked at one, you know, what one, or bleh, sorry, we've already looked at something that would be amongst my top choices for a folding survival knife, and that would be something like the AD-10 from Cold Steel, because you've got a very strong lock here, Compared to the proponent here, the blade's a little bit thinner, but the geometry is probably kind of similar actually in its angles behind the secondary edge. You've got more edge than the proponent and you've got a blade shape more conducive to what I would kind of want to do in a quote unquote outdoors scenario. You've got a way more comfortable handle than the proponent, which you wanna have a comfortable tool if you're relying on something to survive and it's going to be easier to carry too. Uh, weight on this blade, this whole knife, it's about seven ounces compared to the 11.8 of the, the Artisan here. So the Artisan is awesome. It is designed to be awesome and it does a awesome job of being awesome. I'm not taking anything at all away from this knife, but I don't think it's the right tool for the job in this scenario. 8010, more comfortable, lighter weight, just as bulletproof, I would think, in a survival quote unquote scenario. But in the interest of showing something, not quite what my, my first inclination would always be, I'm trying to branch out here, how about something like the Lion Steel TM1? This is a pretty cool knife, check this out. Uh, $214, three and a half inch blade, Sleipner steel, black coated on this particular version and G10 handle, sorry, no, linen micarta handles, single piece. This is an integral piece of micarta right there. So you've got fewer screws and such to kind of break loose in a quote unquote survival scenario. You've got a fairly comfortable handle, not quite as comfortable as the cold steel. You've got a back lock, deep carry clip, glass breaker, ambidextrous thumb plate, lot of cool stuff with this knife and one that I don't think I've ever shown on the channel before. So check that out. But we're also talking, again, I mentioned weight. Weight on this knife here, four and a half ounces. So less than half of one of these and you're gonna have a much more pleasant time using it. Heck, carry two. It's expensive, $214, so it's about the same price as, uh, 
as many of those artisan proponents, although this one right here is 190 bucks. Um, but we're also kind of ignoring the elephant in the room here. If you're thinking about buying something, but this kind of weight to dedicate towards carrying around the survival knife, quote unquote, the adage goes, this, the best survival knife is the knife you have on you. This is a big commitment in the pocket. When you could get a fixed blade, hear me out here, you may not want to EDC these, but that's, that's fine. You can get a fixed blade like the Becker BK18 weight with sheath is 10 and a half ounces. So just a little bit less than the proponent. It carries on your belt, so it's not gonna take up this huge honking bit of space there. And then when you draw the knife, it is lighter, more agile, more comfortable, more suited to quote unquote survival, and still pretty bomb proof. Not as bomb proof as like a BK9, but you know, take my meaning. Other stuff, the SE4 contoured handle version with sheath, 11 ounces, same things apply there. Nice 5 30 seconds of an inch thick blade. So about the same as that artisan. Check that out. Or again, for a, uh, a slightly less obvious suggestion, the Lion Steel B40 comes in 9.6 ounces with sheath for this wood handled version. And that's a nice leather sheath too. And in the hand feels phenomenal. Sleipner Steel uh, price on this one, $158 normally. I know what I would choose anyway. We'll just put a Mora in the car. We'll just leave it at that. I'm gonna put three Moras in each of my, no, I'm gonna put one Mora in each of the cars actually, um, because I think I need to. A Mora chisel knife alongside the Leathermans that I keep in each of the cars already anyway. I like that. They're your cars. Who, who'd have thought I would learn something answering an FAQ question? <laughs> All right, next question comes from uh, J. M Delgado 13, any recommendations for a flickable pocket friendly EDC, preferably US made for XL plus sized hands. I have a Spyderco Para 2 that I love the size and weight of, but would like to venture into something different. Sure thing. You have XL plus hands. I have L slash XL hands, depending on uh, which glove manufacturer we're talking about. Para 3 does fit me pretty well, but if I had larger hands, this main section here on the back might be a little tight. Yes, you do have the finger troll there and you can choke up and you do have more space. Very cool knife. I own, I think I own three pair of military twos. You need to get that down to one, I think here. Or so, put them in your car. So we get a Mora chisel knife, a Leatherman and a PM2. And if we're talking about my biggest vehicle, I've got a big work tough fixed blade in the back somewhere there. No, I don't. Don't forget your shovel. Oh, I have, a, I have a cold steel Spetsnaz shovel yeah. in that car as well. Get a pickaxe. I don't have a pickaxe. We're gonna fill up your car full of stuff. I have a crowbar in the car though. I used to, I don't have it in there anymore. Just drive safely. Yes, that's a warning, drive safely. Cause we got a lot of crap in the back of the car if you're not. Anyway, that's not a threat. It's not a threat. Very cool knives, I love them. But what I've really taken to recently, and this is my example here on the table, and I think fits, uh, fits the criteria quite well. And it's a knife I definitely kind of believe in for this. And that's the Presidio 2 from Benchmade. This is the one that I carry many days out of the week these days. 3.7 inch blade, $171 US made. And what's cool about the handle design here is it's got a, what I like to call a neutral shape. So it's gonna fit a lot of hand sizes, whether they're quote unquote too big for the handle or not. And I'll hold it up here next to the paramilitary too. You can see if I line it up with the, uh, the main handle section, there's definitely more handle there. So not only does it work if your handle, hands are too big for the handle to begin with, it also has a lot more handle on top of that. I mean, again, my slightly larger than average, like I said, large slash extra large hands, I've still got like an extra fingers worth there behind. So if I'm wearing a heavy pair of gloves, I still have a full grip on this. If you have larger hands than I do, you can still get a pretty full grip on it. Even if I line up the front of the handle to the front of that finger choil there, because your pinky can kind of wrap around this upturned section on the back of the handle there, there's technically a little bit more grippable length than on the paramilitary too, even if you're using that choil right there. 
yeah, you could come back onto the back of the, the paramilitary too also, but you, you get what I'm, what I'm saying there, right? Anyway, really cool knives. They work really well. They're flickable, whether you're doing just a centrifugal flick like so, or you can even do that middle finger flick with it. A little bit of a different kind of feel to it than doing that on something like a Spyderco, but it's a great knife, works exceptionally well. Great hand, great handle for larger hand sizes out there. And a fantastic blade shape too. Really just a really excellent package. Did I say really enough? Excellent package. All right, next up we have a new segment, which I'm calling comment of the day. I know, very original. Uh, and this is not a question that, uh, that is in need of answering, but it is just a comment that made me laugh in a way that I just wanted to share it with you folks. Um, this was left on our five fastest knives of all time video, uh, in which we showed five different genres of knife that are very fast. Um, this comment was left by Charcy Hensley. Notice how he didn't say butterfly knife, mom. <laughs> we all had a good laugh over that. Um, but there's a good reason the butterfly knife was not on that video. Yes, if you are practiced at it, it can be very fast, but even the slowest knife we showed on it, which was a griptilian, even this kind of centrifugal motion that is close to a gravity knife, but not quite, but speed wise the same, is still gonna be faster than most people can do a butterfly knife. Thomas, you have a butterfly knife on you, do you not? Not on me. Really? Did you leave it at home today? It's in my bag. Oh, okay. Butterfly knives are cool. They're yes. not, they're, they're very cool, but they're not the fastest things if you're looking for speed of access to. But I just love this. No, no, he did say butterfly knife. Mom. Fantastic. I don't think that Carvin Gibbons going to work with her. Probably not. I don't think she's going to let you get a butterfly knife just because we're telling her it's not as fast as some of these other things. But, and that's between you and her anyway. Now we come to the lightning round for today. Vari Tuska says, I think that's how and, and this is funny too, because this is a, a question about pronunciation and I probably just butchered the heck out of his name. And this uh, otter knife, which was in the, the video he's commenting on, is also made in Solingen, not Zolingen. Don't take it too serious. You're my favorite knife channel. Well, thank you very much. Well, this was about the way I pronounced this word right here on this Boker Uno Trapper. And S-O-L-I-N-G-E-N, if you just look up pronunciation online, I think the top result right now is a very English pronunciation of the word Solingen. But I used, I, I learned to pronounce this word with the kind of SZ, the Z sound, Zollingen from our friends at Boker Germany. So if you're ever curious as to like what, how to pronounce that word, Zollingen is the best approximation I can do as a dirty American. Uh, and there you go, really, really cool knife too, actually. One of my favorites that they've done in recent years. Fantastic. And now the next question in our lightning round, which comes from 48 Mastodon. Do any knife companies make folding knives with a five inch blade? It seems to be a very neglected size. We're showing them cold steels, aren't we? Uh, trying to make this an all cold steel episode? <laughs> well, short answer is there are a few. Cold steel is one. Here's another one, the Strata XL from Kershaw. And it has a five and a half inch blade. The reason you don't see as many of them is twofold. One, they're a bit harder to fit into a pocket, even with this one right here being very a very slim line take on a larger knife. It's still quite the pocket commitment. And secondly, if we're talking about utility, when you're getting into knives this large, there's probably a lot more reasons to be using a fixed blade in that scenario rather than a big folder. Sure, there, there probably are some use cases for a folder that big, but that's the reason most more companies don't do them. You're getting into a Venn diagram where a fixed blade is probably a better tool anyway. That, that's my take on the situation anyway. Well, now we come to our final question of the day, which is of course our most serious question of the day, which comes from Chicken Drumstick. Uh, hey DCA and team, I'm interested in purchasing a big old honkin' knife of a knife. Any recommendations? Do you want an all cold steel knives episode? This is kind of how you get an all cold steel knives episode. Uh, all joking aside, any of these big honking knives here or the 3V Laredo Bowie. That's a big old honking knife of a knife right there. 3V, was this an eight millimeter thick blade? I can't remember the spec exactly. Really cool though. Better bring your wallet though. This is like a $535 knife if, you, if you're interested. But that is a big old honking knife of a knife. 
And no, I won't do the, uh, the what's it, crocodile Dundee thing. But that's all the time we have for today. Let me know what you thought of the answers. And if you have any different suggestions for our fine question askers today, make sure to leave them in the comments. And again, if you have one of your own questions you want a chance to have featured, drop it in the comments below. Check out the links in the description if you're interested in getting your hands on any of these knives. That could have been bad right there, but we're all fine. What was that about driving carefully? I'm not driving yet. Yet. So, <laughs> links in the description will take you to the knives in this video if you want them. And of course, remember our Knife Rewards program, because if you're buying one of these knives, you might as well be earning some free money to spend on your next ones. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, and that's Thomas behind the camera, and we're signing off. See you next time. I'm going to take my own car home. Wise, because no one else is going to get in it with you anyway. No. So.